Hi, Donna's friends over here and Raising Kids with Character over here. So that's an interesting arrangement that I have here. I am so feel so tech savvy when I do this. It's just like, wow, I'm technical. Ha! Huh. I'm also crooked, so I'm not sure if I can tighten that up some or not. I don't know if I can. I guess I'll just be crooked for today. Um, anyway, I am so glad for anybody who is joining me tonight. I know that this is a little bit of an odd time. A lot of times homeschoolers and entrepreneurs are on during the day, and so that's usually a good time to uh, get on and talk about some goal setting and things like that for um, parents and entrepreneurs and anybody who just likes to get better, right? Just get better at whatever it is that you do. So, um but I have my grandkids today, and then Thursday's session will also be uh, at 8 o'clock because I have um, students that day. So anyway, uh, just trying to go with the flow, right? Because, as we're going to talk about in the coming weeks, um, dropping perfectionism and actually uh, going, embracing flexibility and those kind of things is one of the best things that you can do for yourself in terms of productivity, prioritizing, and organizing. So um, today's topic is going to be about prioritizing, and that is how do you know what you should even be doing, okay? Now, I know, you know, those people who have set jobs, we talked about this in an earlier session, when you have set jobs and you go to, you go to work, you go to a job, it's laid out for you pretty much what to do, and you know how your day should be spent, and you have somebody looking over your shoulder. And so in those situations, it can be much easier to do what you're supposed to do. I mean, we all hear those stories. You know, if you, one of my favorite movies, you've got mail that they uh, had to take the um, solitaire off the computers because nobody in New York City was getting anything done. This was like 25 years ago, right? Uh, so there are those instances, I'm sure, where people are not doing what they're supposed to be doing at work. However, the situations become even worse when we try to either you know plan and do as a parent, as a homeschooler, as an entrepreneur, um, just even working around the house on our days off or on the weekends or whatever, that we have these problems in that we don't have somebody nudging us. We don't have somebody who's going to fire us <laughs> in most cases, and we don't have somebody to um, oversee us and to really help get us motivated a lot. And so in these instances, when it comes to parenting, homeschooling, entrepreneurship, small business owners, that kind of thing, you have got to dig deep and you have got to you know just really pull from the stores within you of motivation and um, productivity and so forth. And so that's what these trainings are all about. How can we get to that point where, you know what, we, we don't go through the day not getting things done. We don't go through the day uh, looking back and wishing that you know, we had worked harder or wishing that we hadn't wasted our day or whatever. And I know that um, you know, this is a problem for homeschooling moms a lot, that it's very hard because you not only have to motivate yourself, but you also have to motivate your children. And then you also have to manage a home and do many other things at the same time. The same thing is also true for entrepreneurs and small business owners. You have to juggle everything at the same time. And then usually the flexibility, the very thing that is one of the pluses for being an entrepreneur is also the thing that can bite you in the rear later on because everybody thinks you're available, right? You're flexible. Um, so anyway, those can be problems all the way around. But when it comes to prioritizing, and, and I talked about this before, how I have one full 60-minute session on nothing but prioritizing. Um, but we got a lot of really, really great prioritizing advice uh, when we were first married that has just carried us through 36 years um, in a couple of weeks, actually, of, of marriage. And just a lot of really good helps that, that led us into paths where we could see, okay, this is not going to get us where we want to go. This, this, these things are good things, but they're not going to get us where we want to go. You always hear that, um, you know, uh, good is the enemy of best and you often have probably also heard and this is one thing that we've told our kids through the years and that we've told each other through the years when you say yes to something or someone you say no to something or someone else and all of those 
you know, trite sayings that we that we hear, the little cutesy things you say yes to something, you say no to something else, and and you know, good is the enemy of, of great, and and all of this. It's you know, it's not really bad that we're dealing with. It's good, you know, but it's but is it good or do we want it? Do we want best? All of those little sayings all come back down to prioritizing, and so um, first of all, uh, I think that if we can understand that prioritizing is not an idea. I think, you know, when I teach about nouns, first place thing, an idea, we often think that, think that priorities are, are abstracts. We think that priorities are um, vague things. We think that they're ideas. I like to think in terms of priorities as being actual things, as being actual objectives, goals, not just, you know, well, it's really my priority that we have more family time, or it's my priority that I work harder in my business. And we have, and we have a tendency to use very vague terminology when we talk about prioritizing. And that, and that also leads us to have failed priorities, right? Because anything that's too vague will not be done. And so when we use these vague words to describe our priorities, we're really saying, you know, that it's just a wish, right? And I like that saying that priorities without an, an action list are nothing more, those priorities are nothing more than wishes. Because, because really when you think about it, priorities, we can say something is a priority, and we do it all the time. Oh, that's just a, such a priority to us. That's been such a priority to me. I've just always had that as one of my priorities. But really, if you really want to know what your priorities are, there are two places that you can look. Well, actually three, <laughs> if you want to get technical about our sweet, sweet children. But So there are three places that we can look to find out what our priorities are. The first place is our calendar. Whatever is on our calendar, whatever we are doing, is what our priority is. Not what we want to be doing, not what we wish we were doing, not what we think we should be doing, but what we really do. What we really do, those things are our priorities. The second place to look these after the calendar is your checkbook. Your checkbook is another way, and that's kind of old fashioned, old school, okay, so let's go online instead and let's look at your debit card statement, all right? Um, instead, we can look at those rather than our checkbook. I'm showing my age here. Um, but those are really our priorities. And lastly, we can ask our kids, what do you think are my priorities? And we would do this with our kids all the time when we were raising them. We wanted them to say what they thought were the most important things to mom and dad. Because if they said certain things were the most important things to mom and dad, but we thought our priorities were these other things, then we could know for sure that they weren't meshing and that they weren't our priorities. Because kids generally do not lie, right? When kids say, you just don't pay any attention to me, you just don't spend any time with me, or whatever, generally speaking, that's true. So the first thing we have to realize about priorities is that they should not be vague ideas, They should not, and we should not use vague terminology with them. They should be clear-cut things to do, and they should be what we are really doing. And if we're not really doing them, they're just wishes. So when you get your priorities and you have these supposed five things and you say, you know, faith, my family, my, my home business, homeschooling, parenting, my small children, you know, whatever it might be, a ministry that I'm involved in, whatever it might be, if we healthy, healthy eating, whatever, we, these are my priorities. These are things, these are really my priorities. But if we are not doing them, they are just wishes. So when you get these vague priorities, and at first they will be vague, and they will maybe not be as detailed and as uh, measurable as what I'm going to tell you to do in just a little bit. And that is that, that you can say that something is a priority, but once you, have, once you say something's a priority, then you have to have underneath that priority your um, objectives or your goals to meet those priorities. So for us, we would say, you know, family time is a priority. So uh, we teach this in our family unity seminars. We say, well, okay, uh, being, what's one of your priorities? Definitely, definitely being together as a family. That's definitely one of our priorities. Okay, so what are the things that you do, the, the, the actual list of tasks or the actual goals or the measurable goals that you have to meet this priority of your family being together? Um, 
Well, you know, we try to be together a lot. We try to do devotions together. We try to eat dinner together. Okay, and then what do we have? We have a lot more vague terminology, right? With we try or we're, we're working on it or whatever. And so if you say that time together as a family is your priority, then underneath that should be the exact steps that you are going to take to meet that priority. And, and those should be, you know, what they say about SMART goals. They should be measurable. They should be um, uh, SMART. They should be able to be obtained, SMART stands for something. But anyway, they should be measurable and they should be uh, achievable. Uh, that's the A in SMART. And uh, you sh they should actually be something that you can do. So when we go back to our example of, well, my priority is spending time together as a family. All right, what are your exact steps to make that happen? So for us, we made an exact list. The exact steps were that uh, three or four evenings a week, we would be at home together. Okay, what did that mean? That meant that we couldn't do this, this, and this, right? If my, if my priority is feeding my family healthfully, then my ways that I'm going to carry it out will include a weekly menu, you know, shopping on time so we don't run out of food and have to eat junk food or have to go through the drive through They will be exact steps that we can carry out to put those things in place. So your priorities may seem vague, but beneath them, the tasks or the uh, means by which you're going to achieve your priorities should not be vague at all. They should be very, very, very clear. So relating this to family, we can talk about family unity. We can talk about being together. We can talk about uh, for, for homeschool parents or even parents with struggling children in school that maybe your priority for the summer is to get them up academically. Well, I really want to get my children up academically or my grandchildren. I want to help them to get at grade level in reading or I want to help them to, to get you know to this certain point in their academics so when the school starts again in the fall, they won't be behind. Okay, that's a great priority, but unless it has things right beneath it that you are going to detail out in order to make that happen, this is the book we're going to work through, this is how many times a week we're going to do it, this is what the child is going to do, this is what I'm going to do, here is his checklist, and here are his rewards, right? Unless we have those detailed out, then it's just a wish that you would bring your child up to reading level or up to grade level in a certain subject. It's just a wish. It's not a priority because if you are not doing it, it's not a priority. So let's look over here at entrepreneurship. If your goal is to build your business, whether you have an online business or you have a brick and mortar business, then you should, if you say, well, I want to increase my customers by a certain number, then you should have exact, exact things. Thank you. You should have exact tasks, exact means by which you're going to do it right underneath that. Otherwise, it's not a priority. It's a wish. Hmm. You wish your business would grow this summer. You wish you would get more customers. You wish you would have more income, right? They're just wishes. But if you are very specific, my goal, my, my priority is growing my business. All right, so these are the means by which I'm going to achieve that. I'm going to do this amount of income-producing activity, or this is going to be my daily mode of operation. Here is my checklist. I have an accountability partner who's going to follow up and check and make sure that I'm doing what I say that I'm going to be doing. I'm power, power partnering with somebody else so that we're both meeting our goals together. And... It's not just a wish anymore. You are actually going to carry it out and make it happen. And that is the difference between a priority and a wish. Now, when you say something is a priority, whatever it might be, the first place to actually put that priority is into your daily life. So that takes us all the way back three weeks ago in the first Facebook Live when I talked about your dailies. If something is a priority and it takes daily maintenance or daily um uh, tasks in order to achieve it, then that should become part of your daily living. It should become part of what you do every single day. If it takes something weekly, that should go into your weekly list, into your weekly schedule in order for that to be carried out. Those are the first places that we carry out our priorities because after all, if something is a priority, it's going to be repeated 
right? If something's a priority, it's going to take a lot to make it happen. If it is building a stronger marriage, if it is increasing your customers, if it is increasing your sales, whatever it might be, it's going to take a lot to make it happen. So it wouldn't be a one-time deal. So we would instead put that into your dailies or put that into your weeklies. And it should be done every day just like Need I say this? Like brushing your teeth. Remember when I talked about the dailies? You know, that I, you know, I told the kids we do dishes, laundry, and trash three times a day, no matter what. Um, I think at the time I didn't have as many kids. So there were, was a period of time we had to do it three times a day, all that stuff. Dishes, laundry, trash, three times a day. And it just, it made things, made things really happen. So anyway, what if we say, we go back to my other example, when I told the kids, twice a day that we are going to do dishes and laundry and trash twice a day just like brushing our teeth and then you hope you don't have a child who looks at you and says I don't brush my teeth twice a day anyway so we put it into the schedule and we make it happen so then after we put it in the schedule we make it happen we have to also say do I have too many priorities am I trying to do too many things that's always my problem I always want to do way more things than what I have time for because I love to do I'm a doer I'm Donna the doer. <laughs> uh, I know you just thought I was dancing, Donna, didn't you? So anyway, I like to do, and I like to accomplish. I like to complete. I like to carry out. Um, that's just how I how I roll, you know. So anyway, do we have too many things? And then we go back to the when you say yes to one thing, you say no to something else. Now um, our priorities for, were always our our kids through the years now yes my husband worked a demanding job but as a as a couple we said our family is our priority that we will you know give up a salary um, for 30 years uh, which is not easy to do right it's it's no matter what no matter you know a single income is very very difficult to live on unless you know I guess you're a doctor or a surgeon a surgeon or a lawyer or something like that but we made that decision. And so we decided that we were going to do these things that we prioritized together. And then, then we were able to say to each other, you know, if we say yes to this, we have to say no to this. And then we even took it further to say, if you say yes to someone, you say no to someone else. And we keep, kept that in the forefront of our minds all the time while we were parenting. Those of you with young children, this is the thing to say to yourself over and over again. If I say yes to this person, maybe it's just, you know, not that we should never go out with friends or anything, but maybe it's just not quite as important as saying yes to our kids and yes to our spouses. So prioritizing is needs to be unvague. How's that? Crystal, crystal, crystal clear with the understanding that it is what you do, that it's completely measurable. And you know what? After I said this to myself for so many years, priorities are what I do, priorities are measurable, priorities are on my calendar, priorities are in my planner, priorities are in my checkbook. After we've said this to ourselves for so, so, so many years, I can't even say the words, that's just a priority to me, without just like one. Because if I'm not doing it, I can't say it. I cannot say that something is a priority anymore. Now that I know what a priority is, and now that I know that a priority should be something that's carried out all the time. So I hope that this has been a help to you because whenever you want to know what you should do next, which is often an issue, the next thing that you should do is always your priorities. The next things on your list should always be the things that are your priorities. And then those other things can come later. And, you know, this was hard uh, for us because we had a lot of children. So it was a lot of years with one income and homeschooling them and so on. And a lot of years before I could really start bringing in, bringing in a lot of money because everything that we did as a family took so much time. But you have to just continually remind yourself, this is my priority. This is what I said I want. This is what I want. If this is what I want, this is what I have to do, right? So if you're, if you're in business and entrepreneurship, this is a, a perfect uh, place to really get a handle on this, to say, you know what? I've been saying for so long that my book, I have a student on here who told me he wanted to write a book, and I gave him some ideas. This is These are some more ideas for you, my sweet, sweet, sweet student. You know who you are. Um, so 
I really want to write that book. I really want to build this business. I really want to add more customers. I really want to get my website up and running, whatever it is. If those things are really priorities, then now's the time to say, you know what? I'm going to push aside the things that are not my priorities, and I'm going to put this in that priority place. So later on, I'm going to talk about how many things to focus on at one time and um, a lot of other things. I have some more things about diligence coming up. I believe that might be Thursday. And then next week, we're going to talk about getting help and um, just a, a ton of other things. Having Starting your, night, your morning the night before, I have got so much information from so many years of trying to live a prioritized life with priorities and organization and uh, productivity in place. Not that I've always done it, but you can bet after 36 years of trying to do it that I know a few things that work and a few things that do not work. So, um, you know, let me make the mistakes and then you learn from my mistakes instead. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you will really take to heart and maybe just start jotting down your priorities and leave space underneath those priorities to write the, the tasks or the means by which those priorities can be met. And then throw out some things that aren't important to you. Throw out the things that are not going to get you where you want to go. And focus instead on your priorities and the way that you can achieve those priorities, whether they're family, home, marriage, business, church, whatever they might be. Thanks a lot.